YouTube show. Where are you learning more about the native plants? You very cleverly used the maritime Latin, but for people who maybe might not know that, how would you suggest figuring that out with their new space? I mean, it's it's a combination of books and com you know buying a book that's about seaside or dry gardening or gravel gardening or Mediterranean gardening. Mm -hmm. um, that's why that Olivier Philippi, the two those two books have been helpful to me. Um, they're not native plants for the most part, so I haven't done a native garden at all. But I am interested in what the native species are here, so those are the ones I look for in the wild, but also mm -hmm. what I find at the nursery. Um, so I'd say for beginning gardeners, it's probably good to do a combination of a few key books plus yeah. um, plus internet research. So that's always helpful too. Um, but I, I really just wanted to also push it and experiment with things I didn't know if they'd work. So for instance, there were some really pretty silvery gazanias at the um, um, nursery the other day. And they're just annuals. I think they're from South Africa. And... I just thought, well, those are, I love the colors because they were kind of a very strange apricot and a very strange salmon color. And I thought mm -hmm. the colors looked really great. And I thought, well, let's try this kind of almost soft looking annual and see if it works because the silver leaves kind of tip me off that maybe, because a lot of silver leaf plants grow in a place where they need to reflect the sun. Yeah, yeah, totally. So the silver leaf, anything silver leaf remind me, makes me think, well, maybe it'll work in this garden, a, a lot of it. You know, like I have Santalina, I have a lot of sages. Um, so the um, those little gazanias really have done well. They also kind of fried up a little bit in the heat, but now they're doing great and they're, they're blooming and having another series of blooms. So for me, it's kind of just close observation. Um, and I would say that you were saying that, you know, some people want to get started immediately, but I, I did want to get started immediately. And right. I, that's what I why I did this. I'd contrast my approach from with what I wanted to do with a person who buys a place, wants to rip out the landscape and install a rather generic landscape that mm -hmm. they imagine is what they want, meaning, mm -hmm. oh, I had a house that had this, 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 and this on the other side of the country. I'd like the same thing here. And that I think is an unsuc unsuccessful model because I think it's very hard to just, you know, copy and paste a garden um, anywhere, even okay. in the same state, it's sometimes hard. So I, I just really want to make a garden that's about the place that I'm in, because I know that that's going to be successful. You know, I think Beth Chatto, she's another gravel garden or dry garden expert. Her name's Beth, Beth Chatto, and she has a famous garden in England, and she wrote a book called Dry Gardening, which I looked at as well. And her motto was always, right place, right plant, right place, was the key to success. So just make sure you got the right plant in the right place, and you're done. That's all you need to do. And also, I would say, the mindset also is important of this is experimental. Some of this will work. Some of this won't. This whole, you know, I think home ownership for a lot of people when they're starting out, I think you wrote an Instagram post this week or no, it was your letter to the editor. I think a couple of months back of like you buy a house and then all of a sudden there are all these things that happen that you don't know, right. you know, that's going to happen in your gardens too. And maybe framing that whole first year as an experimental educational experience instead of I bought this house, I have to make the landscape perfect in my first year. And I have all of this pressure because I think it was interesting I had some listeners, you know, I asked listeners, I told listeners I was speaking to you, I had them write in and it was interesting how overwhelmed people were feeling. And it was a lot of questions on how to manage the overwhelm of it all. So yeah. maybe just approaching with that experiment, experimental mindset also kind of sets you up to have some more fun, I think mm -hmm. too. And for your, you, know, you don't have to solve all the problems at once. Um, you don't have to worry I mean, there's some neighborhoods where the neighborhood pressure is a little bit high in the fact that if it doesn't look great, yeah, people, you know, I, my Keep little lake cabin was in a lake community and people would stop by because I wasn't mowing my lawn because I had daffodils. And so some of the folks would stop by, especially some of the older folks would stop by and really be unhappy that the lawn wasn't mown, you know? So, um, and for <laughs> me, it was fine. I didn't care, yeah. but um, they thought it was super messy and was like a sign that, you know, of neglect. And for me, it was like, no, I'm experimenting with this lawn with full of daffodils. And this is part of the process. I have to leave these leaves up. But yeah, giving yourself permission to not solve all of it at once, I think is key. And and I feel overwhelmed by the, the property. Um, so that's why I did the three experiments. <laughs>